It sounds like there's a laser like incoming, so we gotta cut out all the unnecessary words. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. All lore boys nominal. Um, <laughs> my name is Peter O'Donoghue, and I am joined by Il Khan. I got my nominal stuck in my pee hole. Uh, Il Khan, Ethan Palmer, I guess, and Precenter Marshall. <laughs> James Miller. There you go. Uh, yeah, we've got the rebel and we've got the media guy. Jamie, can I have your nominal? I want to get it to, to, to get mine out. Uh, mine's, yeah, I'm not nominal. I think I'm numeral. I don't know how this stuff works. Yeah, yeah. yeah all all Romans numeraled is, yeah. uh, is, is a reference. <laughs> um, so the internet's number one fake history podcast, according to us, returns to finish what the BattleTech bitch clans never could, and that is the Battle of Tukeyed. The Battle From of Battle Tech of Tuke, like the Canadian hat. Uh, yeah, uh, my friend Ayid. Uh, yeah, so it's like a knit cap for a guy we know. Yeah. <laughs> is, is for our American listeners is what this Battletech episode is focused around. Yeah. Now, Peter, yeah. we've talked about Battletech in the past, right? I don't think we have. Am but... I an idiot thinking that we've talked about this before? Dude, for sure we've talked about it before because instead of an intro, Pete said blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah, you call burying the lead. This. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You downloaded this for a reason, you fucking nerds. Just yeah. listen. <laughs> um, I'd like to do a quick little recap here. Uh, so we're going to go send it over to Duncan Fisher uh, and whatever names that you two improvise over on TSN, which is the Solaris Network. Uh, it's sponsored by Tim Hortons, Canada's favorite coffee. You can't spell favorite without you. Sure. Isaac Holmes with uh, inner, uh, Galactic Sports here. We got the clans coming in from the deep periphery, coming to spoil our fun for the home home team here. On the, this on is Tuka Duncan Yee. Fisher and Ian Holmes, also joined with J J James O'Frick. <laughs> James O'Frick. He's our James Arab Frick. correspondent. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, A-F-R-I-Q. <laughs> um, the first clan... In the conference, to head to the finals on Tukeyed, the Smoke Jaguars uh, were fresh off their defeat on Luthien and had something to prove. Team captain Lincoln Osis was clearly not ready for the Calm Guard offensive line and were knocked out of the playoffs. Uh, bad day to be a Jags fan, wouldn't you say, Ian? Oh, it certainly is. It certainly is. There's, there's been quite a massacre down here on 2KE. The home team's just uh, really giving them a run for their money, these, uh, these outfielders, huh? So, guys, as someone who doesn't know a lot about sports or battle tech, <laughs> maybe we should do a quick recap so uh, so I can follow better this time. Well, thank God you've tuned into TSN, the Solaris Network here, because the second blow of the early games of the uh, Tukiyid Conference was dealt to the rest of the cat people when the Nova Cats tried to, if we recall... Slow drop their forces from the sky. Right, they're, in they're, their... just, they're just dropping in at a snail's pace here. And uh, boy, are they just getting picked off like sitting ducks up there, huh? Uh, they are absolutely. It's, it's, it's like, it's, some would say that a sitting duck is actually a harder target because it's not <laughs> gigantic and just sitting in the sky. Um, the Comguard's Eric Force, of course, shredded the Nova Cats uh, to pieces here. Um, if you are, are you a gambling man? Uh, Ian, oh, uh, uh, I've I've been known to uh, bankrupt my family and join the crap store <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> uh, the Steel Vipers uh, landed next in the Battle of Tukey. Give me a thousand uh, credits early... on the Steel Vipers. <laughs> um, we're recapping the uh, losses that have already happened. Give, give, me, give me it all. Put it all on Steel Vipers, baby. I'm there. For I'm, gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you not to do that. They're gonna pull. They're gonna pull through. Listen to me. Uh, what? What the fuck? Do you have Chet? Listen to me, okay? They're gonna fucking pull through. I need this, okay? <laughs> they're underdogs. The odds are giving them ten to one. I need this, okay? I'm walking out of here with ten thousand credits. Put it all, all on, all on Steel Vipers, bills, baby. <laughs> yes, yeah, bills. Baby. Um. The Steel Vipers landed next, but for some reason agreed to play hockey in the Devil's Pass, a volcanic swamp where their skates were useless and well, even no a hindrance. Well, for hockey. 
chat. That's no good. This is like, you know, the, the molten ground is no good for skates. I'm going to say that. <laughs> uh, San Jose's Diamond Sharks uh, landed next, but they never watched the enemy team play or even bothered to read about the rules of the game. Uh, they... <laughs> They had neglected to account for the Com Guards winning all of their playoff games up until this point, resulting in a catastrophic loss for the Diamond Sharks. Um, as we all know, teams play multiple teams simultaneously in hockey, um, and if they win, they can hit the ice to back up any other of their own team that are still playing. Uh, well, th this happened during in... the great NHL WWE merger of 2032, of course, of when course. Uh, tag yes. team hockey became a thing. Yes, the only reasonable 15 on 5 power plays were a thing briefly. I, I have to say, adding skates and hockey sticks to Hell in a Cell sure did change that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> so many twisted ankles. <laughs> Rick um, Blair on skates just yelling woo sounds like something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes we would say that coaches should try other careers. And in this case, the Diamond Sharks switched from hockey to industrial design. So, okay, guys, I know, I know we're, we're memeing and stuff, but I am so lost. What is going on? So a bunch of, a bunch of deep periphery uh, clans. You remember the deep periphery? You remember the clans, right? right? Yeah. yeah. They all decided to invade the inner sphere. And yes. they, all, they all decided, they, they warred for like a couple years, and then they're like, we're going to have 15 months of peace or whatever it was. A very right. short amount of time. 15 years. 15 yeah. years, sure. Um, and then they said like, oh, we're going to settle it all in 2K Eid. Everybody's going to show up at 2K Eid, and if you guys could beat us, then we'll say that you guys are the winners. And they just showed up, and they, uh, they just like strapped butter to the bottom of their feet while they were landing, <laughs> and... Oh, I remember this job. part, yeah. They, they yeah. Instead of coming in all at once, like you should when you're fighting one big army, they, they came in one at a time. Exactly. Yeah. Just got yeah. all slaughtered, yeah. Exactly. Um, and the, the final team here, uh, the, the reason I wanted to set it up as a recap, uh, as like a sports recap here, is because it is very much a planned out kind of event that happened. And this this second part of the Battle of Tukiyid, sadly, I guess... Uh, I, I'll, uh, not so much like a lot of our episodes this is not a standalone episode this is starting at the end of an episode that we did th two weeks ago that was just too fucking long basically yeah. <laughs> so, so if you're cool. if you listened to this one last week and you had to wait a week to listen to this one and now you've forgotten everything that we've said um i guess tough you should have you should have listened to this one sooner huh yeah even yeah. though it's, I hope you enjoy even though you're listening to it sketch. at 7 a.m eastern when it comes out uh <laughs> you should listen to it sooner <laughs> so, you know what like a lot of stuff bounces off my smooth brain so i'll try and play the role of, of the person who, who maybe doesn't remember as much <laughs> yeah, we'll fill them in as we go uh we do have one more uh we do have one more little um uh, game here to 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 recap here because I think uh, um, Ian Holm, you should uh, head back to your bookie and get back your in quotes investment uh, because the game between the Com Guard and the Ghost Bears ended in a draw. I don't know how gambling works, but I guess a tie means you get your money back. Um. Well, uh, that's well. So, so see the people that the people that I gamble with don't always like to give me my money back, so. Gonna have to take yours. Now, I don't know if you noticed this uh, this giant mech warrior that's been sitting in the studio with us, but I'm gonna climb into that, and I'm gonna rob you of all your money right now, okay? So, all right. Just get your wallet ready, would you? I'm just gonna just gonna clamber up here. <laughs> See, Ethan made the mistake of uh, climbing it. He's, Ethan still uses an inner sphere mech, and I use a clan mech, no, and Ethan's, Ethan's mech doesn't take debit. I'm in uh, it, and I'm I have no sec. cash on me. I'm in it in a sec. I got one of the old. <laughs> I got one of the old credit card uh, knuckle busters there. You know. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So just uh, just get it ready. Do you have any cash on you? Because cash is better. Nope. Honestly, cash is nope. better. No, 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 I don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, the old the old style mechs were uh, tank busters, uh, bunker busters, which is heavier artillery, and knuckle, knuckle busters, busters, which is graphite credit card technology uh, <laughs> <laughs> to take imprints from their enemies. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, if you're near a Dairy Queen, a Nut Buster Parfait, I think you can Ooh, get. Delicious. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Delicious um, and nutritious. It's got peanuts, I'm pretty sure. 
We are sponsored. Ugh. Sorry, I just touched a big clump of cat hair, and it grossed me out viscerally. There, um, <laughs> I, I know uh, you just cooked a steak. I thought you reached out of camera and put your hand in a steak. <laughs> no, it, it's it's in the kitchen. Um, I put my fingers so, in meat. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> uh, so just to finally recap the uh, the Tukey, the early parts of the Tukey conference here, um, the Ghost Bears uh, did end in a draw against the Com Guards, and they took their one to one prize money and made a country within the Inner Sphere. Basically, they set up their own little dominion called the Ghost Bear Dominion, where they had um, headed over to the Kegger with uh, with the Russell Hogs and, uh, right, and right, yeah, the Ghost Bears and the Russell Hogs were like, "Fuck this! This is, game is dumb. Let's go! Let's go party!" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it's like what we need to do is shotgun some tall boys because uh, war clearly is not our forte. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess for anybody who's listened this far, uh, without the context, do go listen to our first ba- battle tech uh, battle of two K eight episode, uh, which yes. came out three weeks ago. Uh, yeah. And God bless you for sticking around through all that. If you yeah. didn't know what the fuck's going on, like Jamie. Yeah. God bless you, I like Jamie. To, uh, I like I'm going to chain to my boys. chair, though, so I don't have much choice. <laughs> I like to launch the boys into a little bit of improv here and there. And my beautiful fiance and I were talking a couple of weeks ago, and she was like, I have like advanced to the point where I have like a, a friendship with Ethan that is separate from just him being Peter's friend. And she was just like, he he sometimes complains that he's like, I try to set up the boys to do these little improv sketches every once in a while, <laughs> but it's so hard via Discord, yeah. and so I wanted to write one for uh, for that, because I that, found out about your desires. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's always my uh, sound check, uh, saying I like something is usually like my attempt at trying to get you guys to riff. That's why today I was very disappointed when you were like, ah, I got nothing better than what Jamie said. <laughs> uh, well, it turns out I, I I had written it I had written it days ago. <laughs> this made me very happy. So uh, the list for the listeners, it's uh, apparently uh, only something you'd listen to when you're chained to the desk, according to uh, <laughs> at dinner. I know it's James O'Frick, but yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time retaining the battle tech stuff, so the layer of improv on top of it, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure where we were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we. I, I threw the NHL in there as well. It's just like, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. NHL's not my forte either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jamie's like, oh it- fuck, they're gonna ask me to read next. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we would never do that. Okay. <laughs> oh well. Come on. A uh, well, 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 woman, woman, went, went to the 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 door. <laughs> Jamie can read, so folks. He reads all his episodes. Don't add him. <laughs> yeah, Jamie tries to spell my last name that has two silent letters in it. Yeah. And just has a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 when I have written your last name, I have checked your Twitter before. Just to be oh. sure. Yeah. 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 So, uh, now that we had a little bit of fun there, uh, we can get into the uh, final moments here of the Battle of Tukey from Battletech. Mm-hmm. Uh, we left out the two major clans from Battletech, which are the Jade Falcons and the Wolves. Um, or the Clan Wolves. I don't know how you would pluralize that. <laughs> um, clan Pupperinos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The clan fursuits and the Jade Falcons. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Jade Falcons have a strategy. They they're kind of laid back, and then it's the the wolves are all yiffing all the time. Good. That's... So they just they, they don't actually ever fire their weapons. They just l- leap onto other mechs from behind to give them shoulder hugs. Aww. Oh, yeah, that's kind of sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the final two clans uh, involved in the Battle of Tukeid, like I said, with the clan, uh, the Jade Falcons, the Clan Wolf. Uh, the Wolves used to have a first part of their name uh, since they had been founded by Mark Twain, uh, but this has since been scrubbed from their history. So it's just Clan Regular Wolf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, if slash fic when we do a Clan history episode, uh, we'll detail their history a lot more uh, because they're like directly tied to characters from pretty much every episode of Battletech that we've already done. Yeah. Um, what you need to know for now is that the Wolves and the Jade Falcons um, were part of the original 20 that were founded in the Deep Periphery by Nicholas Kerensky, who was the eldest son of Alexander Kerensky, who was the head of the Star League. Who led the um, or, right? Yeah, the Star League Defense Force, actually, not the Star League. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. Yeah. Um, and he exactly led the exodus from the inner sphere. He was just like, fuck you. I'm taking the jocks and the nerds and we're 
and we're <laughs> out of here. And yeah, I'm sure exactly. there will be no jock on nerd violence or vice versa. No, exactly. Well, I mean, the inner spirit left behind was basically just like the dean of the university, and yeah. that was it. It was nothing but university deans the dean, uh, left the, behind. The dean and the Melvins, right? All the kids who are like, oh, don't worry, I'm I'm here to snitch on the other kids, you know? I don't, no, Randall was the narc in recess. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the hunchback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I yeah. meant Melvin more as a generic term, not as everybody oh, okay. was named Melvin or Dean, but maybe. Oh, okay. right. Well, I was talking to the dean as in, like the head of a department in the university. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I yeah. was talking Melvin is in like uh, a suck up. I right. don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if that's. I don't know if that's generally used, but I used it generally. Yeah. Maybe we've just coined the term. <laughs> guys, you're like a, a Randall and a Melvin trying to figure out a point right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, 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 Jamie's talking shit about me. Come on, do something. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'll punish. I'll punish him. But his grades are too good, so I'll just I guess I'll just lie about it. Uh, yeah, I can't even read somehow. So. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Readings for nerds. Um, so the last clan to go in our last episode uh, were the Ghost Bears, and following them were the Jade Falcons. Um, they're also the antagonists of the 80s cartoon, uh, where a character named Nikolai Malthus uh, leads the invasion of the planet Somerset. Um, I discovered this week that the remastered Battletech 80s cartoon is just available on YouTube. Nice. We I... want didn't we watch like the first episode back in the day when we were doing these these battle tech episodes? Maybe we not the remastered. We watched Transformers for sure together. We like... we have watched uh the battle tech cartoon together because I again cuz it was back when we used to like clear out an entire 2 for bef- <laughs> before we recorded and then get a secondary one for after. Yeah, yeah. I remember it distinctly the like the three of us just peeing ourselves laughing at like the 80s CGI yeah. that like kicks into gear when the battles start in 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 the cartoon itself. Well, I have distinct memories of this thing. And I I'm glad to know it wasn't just a, a fever dream. No, no, you did not. It was not just a beautiful dream of an 80s cartoon. Uh, it, it, it exists now. It has been remastered and posted to YouTube. Because, so. you know, every time I do peyote, all I see is 80s cartoons. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ethan huddled around a bucket filled with his own vomit, and all he's doing is talking to Hot Rod from Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy who descends from the moon yeah, to it, give him advice on his life. <laughs> it's all it's all, it's all, all gossip, too, about the Transformers universe. It's all Starship yeah. said this, and Bumblebee <laughs> said that, and, you know, Optimus Prime is dating who these days? <laughs> Hot Rod's a good guy, though. Yeah, it's Rodimus Prime now, which, I don't know, it's a good stage name for a porn guy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Falcons had some uh, experience with what they described as dishonorable Com Guard tactics. Uh, if you remember from the previous episode, the Com Guard are the private military set up by the communications company and central bank of the Inner Sphere, which is just uh, the worst thing ever no, basically they're probably, yeah they're, they're pretty good for justice i bet yeah i'm sure yeah. they are it's good why would you want to have to go to the mall and to the courthouse to to pay your alimony you know what i mean why not just go to the mall pay your alimony there this sounds like a win-win for me yeah, dude yeah. i i would love the mil- like military protected uh alimony booths at every mall <laughs> <I know. laughs> Speaking of the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> G.I. Joe delivers the kid his own fucking alimony pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you kid, remember, if you ever divorce a woman after putting a baby in her, you owe her money forever. And, yeah. <laughs> and knowing is half the battle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Falcons had uh, d- had already fought the Com Guards, and they had been defeated uh, at the Battle of Twycross, which we have mentioned but not done a full episode on. It's just another Clan V Com Guard battle yeah. back in the day. Uh, the dishonor with the Com Guard tactics is apparently winning in a different way because, uh, as we'll discuss in this episode and we did in the last one, Com Guard tactics are seemingly quite reasonable, like sending backup and shit yeah. uh, <laughs> a- 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 opposed to the just like uh, me so strong sort of mentality of the fucking clans just, where it's just like oh well if our if our if our leader dies then we just all kill ourselves sort of thing this is um this is why i mentioned the jock on nerd violence because clearly the jocks just murdered all the nerds as soon as alexander Kerensky left the inner sphere 
uh, because they're all just these dumb big meatheads that have like ceremonial battles to the death and all this stuff. Yeah. Stuff that yeah. no nerds would brook. So he literally just took, and we talked about this on the last episode where I think he's the big bad guy of this whole, the, the entire series. Cause he literally just took all the smart people and had them murdered in deep space. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Mer's legal in international waters. Yeah. So when you go to space, international you go space, even space. further. <laughs> So you can get free music and kill nerds is yeah, in exactly. international waters. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Falcons uh, for the Battle of Two Keeds sent in their Delta, Vow, and Gamma galaxies, uh, which uh, galaxy is a very large um, contingent of battle mechs because um, a star is five, and then you've got a binary, which is 10, and a trinary, which is 15, and then it goes to like clusters and galaxies and all this shit, and more math than I can possibly handle. Uh -huh. um, and so anyway, they sent these three galaxies uh, to Tukiyid in an effort to land before Clan Wolf and mock the Com Guards um, as they integrated in their own Falcon Guards. Um, and the Falcon Guards were kind of uh, called Desgra, which is a clan uh, term for disgraced because they had been defeated in the past. And okay. as we know from like Bat Call being just a lazy portmanteau of battle and challenge, I think Desgra is just because disgrace is too hard to say. I, <laughs> I, I don't. I didn't look it up. That's just lower boys canon there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Falcon Guards ha were among the the forces defeated by the Com Guards previously at Twycross. So they were just like, "Wow, we're going to shame these guys by sending in these nerds they've already stomped." Like, isn't that yeah. gonna work? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, because last time they lost, I gave them an atomic wedgie and told them they better not do that again. <laughs> <laughs> what is the difference between a wedgie and an atomic wedgie? Atomic wedgie way? is over the head. It's yeah, I was going to say oh, band, the band on the forehead. Yeah, the band on the forehead is an atomic wedgie. Oh, yeah. my, I don't think I own a pair of underwear that could physically do that. That's the horrible. No, it's see, that's the common misconception. You think the underwear stretches, but it's actually your body that stretches. It's, it's the oh. nerd that flexes. It's yeah, not about it folds the, you up in about on yourself. Underwear. Think yeah. of uh, think of a woman twerking, would you, James? Uh, think of the way that her back arches uh, between her pussy and her crack, and um, her butt flexes up into the air. That shortens the distance between her forehead and her butt. Not something you'd normally yeah. think of while watching a woman twerk, but... Maybe no. I'm not very flexible, but I don't think... Maybe, <laughs> maybe my underwear is too small. I don't know. I don't think the it works. Shortest, the shortest distance between a pussy and a crack is a straight line. And then anyway, that, that's the math math. <laughs> yeah. So Katoa in her butthole. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Why is this? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, it was a sunny day today, folks. I'm sorry. We've all been yeah, outside bartending and drinking. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, The Falcon Guards were under the command of Aiden Pride, who is the brother of Martha Pride. Um, we've talked about Martha Pride in previous episodes. Uh, she is easily one of the most important characters in the Battletech universe. Mm -hmm. um, like, I recognize her name along with, like, Kerensky and 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 fucked and all this and and like um Devlin Stone and like all the all the all the real the real motherfuckers from BattleTech Martha Pride is among them. Um Aiden is described as unconventional. Um he dyes his hair and uses a flip phone. Uh so you know he's like real unconventional cool guy shit. Um he's also known as Jorge for some reason, which is not a made up fact. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden Pride's in canon nickname is Jorge. Okay, is that just like a weird racism thing, or I don't think so. I think I, the clan's probably moved beyond that and moved much more into like the jock nerd dynamic, opposed to like a. Is it what, spelled what, like George? Like, is it spelled like the Spanish spelling of George, or is it yeah. like H O R H A Y or something weird? It's J O. It's J O R G E. It's just straight up regular Jorge. Okay, and they call Aiden Pride that. Okay. Yeah, uh, it, I don't think they thought much about it, so we probably shouldn't think too much about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably not when they were writing this, but like uh, uh, nations, the nations of Earth probably meant literally nothing, even to the borders of the the kingdoms of the inner sphere, let alone the clans that like left from that. So I have no fucking idea why they called them Jorge. Oh, yeah, yeah. I When yeah. I said, is it a weird racist thing? I was like, is this just like a weird... 
like cultural appropriation that the writers put in, not like an in canon racist thing. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, maybe. I mean, Fair it enough. was the eighties, so yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Ra- yeah, that's just like yeah, yeah, probably. Racism was cool. Drugs were bad. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, Aiden had also studied uh, Earth, or as it's known here, as Terran culture since arriving in the in- inner sphere. So in the three years of the during the clan invasion, he started to kind of, you know, he's like, oh, wait, don't burn that book. I want to I'm going to keep that one for my, you know, creepy horde of, of Earth books, basically. So he was studying um, Terran culture, um, but he couldn't really grasp it. I suppose because he was born in the deep periphery. So he wasn't really sure what he was reading. Um, perhaps what really made him unconventional, Loreboy's canon, was his request to conquer only the hilarious-sounding target cities of Ulala and Hump Tulips, right. uh, which we mentioned Hump in the last episode. We did talk about those on the last episode. They were yes. a potential title, uh, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. I googled Hump Tulips, and it is a real place in Washington State, and I'm sure in Europe. Okay, now. Is I, it- I don't know. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Is it two lips the flower, or is it two lips, like, the lips on my face? Uh, no, it's T-U-L-I-P-S, okay. so the flower. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I think if you studied Terran culture from a distance, it'd be kind of weird, too. We do a lot of weird <laughs> stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, like, why do you, whenever uh, you care about someone, you place your two lips together? Like, wh- who started that? Well, you're doing, it to, oh, you're doing yeah. it to create one continuous tunnel from oh, my right, butthole from to their butthole. Right. But yeah. to butt. I forgot right. about that. Yeah. Humans, are just, shake hands? humans are just donuts when you think about it. And the yeah. hole in the middle is uh, goes from your mouth to your butt. Yeah. Yeah. That's all anyway, I can my, say about it. It's true. Yeah. Tim, Tim sponsored by Tim Hortons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Hortons. <laughs> hey, Tim Bits, though, isn't that like a little insensitive? Because it's named after Tim Horton, who died in a car crash. And then they have all these little bits named after him. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it's jelly filled and shit. Oh, this one pops in your mouth. Like, Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> this, one's, this one's you have the birthday cake Tim Bits on the days when it would have been his birthday. Oh my oh, god. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Did Tim Hortons <laughs> die in a car accident? It's got is that a, a real thing? And a piece of glass in it. You're like, oh, it's so, so festive. Because <laughs> <laughs> he died in a, he was drunk, right? When he crashed his car? Yeah, I wasn't there. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I wasn't I, at I, that. I, I'm learning all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm Google. I wasn't at that part. Jamie, pull up the clip while, uh, or Ethan, Ethan, Jamie, pull up the clip while we do yeah, this. Tim Horton was like a famous hockey player. He played for yeah. the NHL, which I don't know much about, but I know him because there's like a coffee chain that used to be really good, but has been declining in quality over time uh, in Canada. The regs got better recently, though. Okay. Yeah, they got bought out by, um, by Burger, Burger King. Burger King. Yeah. Um, Burger Bing. Yeah, <laughs> Kurger Bing. <laughs> yes, he he was drunk when he crashed his car. There we go. All right, well, there goes all of my pity. That is the most irresponsible thing you <laughs> if can If he do. only would have stopped and got a coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you've got that little, that little bar on a chain, the, like the clearance rack for the drive-thru, so you don't bring like a big-ass truck through there. And it, th- th- that's what he'd do. He just like went in with like a Mercedes Sprinter, clipped the top of his van, and just rolled through the drive-thru. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so other than Tim Horton on the side of the com guard, uh, so this is, uh, this is to defend Ulala and, um, Tulip. Pump Tulips. Tulips. Yeah. Uh, the green rated 11th and third armies, uh, got some backup from the 394th, 77th and 309th divisions, um, that were put under actually the direct control of the big dick daddy himself, pre-center marshal James Miller. Oh, James O'Frick. Frank. No, it's Anastasius Focht, but you chose the pre-center marshal tag at the beginning of the episode, so that's oh. I just figured I'd give you that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, although, if you wanted to get a mullet and eye patch and just become Anastasius Focht himself, I would totally support that. I, I would I, date you. All right, man. Yeah, I, I'm down <laughs> for the mullet. Like we got, no, well, maybe not that much time on our hands anymore, but I got long hair. Let's go for it. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that's true. Like. Anastasius Focht is on the side of the Inner Sphere Defense Comstar, right? He is the head of the he is the head of the Com Guards. Yeah, yes. Okay. Just okay. making sure. I was, I was he sure. is the disgraced Steiner Prince uh, who had been kidnapped and changed his name, and now he works for the Com Guards. Right. 
got chained yeah. to a chair, forced to listen to a Lore Boys episode where they talked about sports and BattleTech, and he came out a changed <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's where he got his eye patch. We don't know how, but I mean, Lore <laughs> yeah. Boys would fucking do that. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they handcuffed one of his eyes to a radiator, so we had to saw it off. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I've seen Saw. That's what happens in that movie, right? Pretty sure. <laughs> just handcuffed normal size, though. It's just like, yeah, yeah. Not, not even on. It's just a handcuff Someone resting on his face. That... Like... <laughs> yeah, it's just like stuck to his face. If someone only bought that dude a normal size bike. This never would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. He was never fulfilled with his hobbies, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, the command staff of the eleventh and third uh, didn't have much combat experience. That's the green. Like, the green rating is just they're just greenhorns, right? Okay. Um, uh, however, if you recall, uh, Fox had been training people in simulators for some time. That was the thing he did. He had started doing like at the beginning of the invasion, which we talked about in the last episode. He was just like, okay, just like sex up our best mechs. And put them in the simulators against against this thing to train them against the future technology that is invading us from outside of space right yeah. now. They have lasers. Let's uh, train them on what to do when you get shot with a laser. How to staunch yeah. a laser wound. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's like pre-grilled at that point. You don't really need to do anything. You just like toss in some polysporin and one of those like two dollar elastic pharmacy bands, and you're good to go, right? And, and that was and that was that course. That's all it was. Oh yeah. yeah. Would a mirror like stop? a really powerful laser would it like bounce it back or would it go through the mirror it would probably heat up the laser and just burn through it it would like probably bounce back at first and then like kind of like melt its way through or what i don't know i don't have many lasers unstoppable object versus an immovable force is that is that what yeah. you're asking here <laughs> do... Wait, how do you counter a laser is the thing yeah do laser beat mirror google does laser beat yeah the the game of the future of what? rock paper scissors what does Google say? Okay, the top one. So Google Google's pretty good. Does mirror armor work against laser guns? And? Uh, mirror only means that laser beam is reflected as a beam. On dense battlefield, that's exactly what you want to avoid because it would be even more deadly than traditional ricochet. No go, <laughs> no uh, go for mirrors. <laughs> okay, all right. What, what yeah. you want is just white, as bright as you can get it, to reflect light in all directions, making it less threatening to other soldiers. And you need it to uh. stay white. Heat your armor absorbs because it will absorb some. Must be distributed and dissipated fast. If it can't, Who wrote this? black yeah. burn marks <laughs> are not acceptable. This is uh, it's like... this is worldbuilding.stackexchange.com was the oh. the top it's the so... featured snippet on Google. <laughs> It sounds like there's a laser like incoming, so we got to cut out all the unnecessary words. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, lasers Why travel good faster tactic than traditional short bullets. tactic better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah a, um, lot, a lot of uh, world building those deckschange.com. Uh, we got a Quora answer here. Oh. Do mirrors reflect lasers? First of all, there are first surface mirrors and rear surface mirrors. Oh my. I'm okay. a rear service mirror man. I'm all about the. I, I like a mirror with good hips. <laughs> you like you like to hit a mirror from the rear. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I like to hit a mirror from the front so I can see my shame. Uh, oh yeah! <laughs> first surface mirrors are only found in industrial equipment because they are easy to scratch and damage the silvered surface. So I guess it's just like you have a silvered surface and then you have like yeah. a layer coating it. Of the glass on top. Do you put the silver? Uh, you probably yeah. want the silver on the outside, or else the. The yeah, laser so would if, not if you shine a one megawatt laser at a ninety percent mirror with one centimeter spot size, and you'll have a hundred kilowatt dis. Oh, wow, this is way too technical for for us. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second, this is turning into work here. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll, I'm satisfied with the answer. I'm going to wear all yeah. white. I, yeah. I think <laughs> <laughs> not after <laughs> laser. <laughs> lasers are more effective after after laser Labor Day. Oh my God, Laser oh. Day. <laughs> oh yeah. I am. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't wear white after la or do wear white after laser day I guess. after laser day which is september 2nd yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah so he had been uh, anastasius Falk had been i guess teaching Training. people to wear white yeah, yeah in, in the simulators uh since the clan started to invade shows and up, he wanted to make up, sure shows up to lecture and he's just the prof in a full white tuxedo and everybody's just like yeah get a load of this guy starts firing off lasers at all the students like <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, he was one of those cool teachers from yeah, the exactly. movie where he's just like it's real trial by fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he had put all of his green soldiers in simulators, and then he wanted to make sure that like his gamers could pull the trigger when it came like time to do so. So he this is why he reinforced their divisions uh, on the battlefield against the Falcons. Right, right. I um, can kill a man. I've played The Last of Us. You know. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly <laughs> right. Anyway, video games cause real world violence. No, is the point the of this episode? That's, that's what I'm the, getting at. That's the truth. Yeah. Um, not wanting to be a fucking hack. And recycle jokes like some kind of lore boy. Mm -hmm. uh, Fox allowed the Jade Falcons dropships to land unopposed this time because, as we recall, he shredded the Nova Cats in the atmosphere when they were just like, "What if we stealthily fell from the sky like beautiful snowflakes?" Um, <laughs> <laughs> bad strategy, apparently. There, there's nothing in nature more durable than the snowflake. What was that? There's nothing in nature more durable than the snowflake. No, exactly. <laughs> if it could just like melt on the exterior of your sunglasses, it's like, <laughs> ah, yes, God's perfect creation. <laughs> um, and he had hoped that letting them drop on a pose would make them paranoid. Um, again, after the Nova Cats had been shredded to pieces by dropping slowly. So he's, I don't know, like playing mind games against the clans as they all, at, to, I guess, fuck with their honor more than anything. Because they do have a very rigid culture. Uh, and obviously he knew this at this point. Um, this worked, thankfully. Uh, so the Falcon forces advanced cautiously, uh, all the while being harassed by light scout mechs, which was referred to as strike and hiss by uh, Marshall Falk for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like the strike part is just like hit him with a light weapon and then... And then, fucking say something mean. Yeah, ra raise your hackles. You know, uh, scrape the air against the back of your throat. It's pretty. Yeah, yeah. stock. Well, I guess. Stuff. Yeah, it's like the bark uh, is worse than the bite kind of thing. You gotta show them the bite first. So you know, the bark's serious. Yeah. Oh, hey, wow. homeboys, all strike and no hiss, right? Yeah. Am I right, fellas? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh my god, we're hit. We're hit. No, no, wait. We're fine. He's not hissing. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was just testing us to see if he could eat us like a shark or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not yeah. serious, though. Yeah. Uh, regardless of whatever the fuck he meant by strike and hiss, uh, the, this strategy convinced the already cautious Falcons that they were up against multiple divisions of the 11th Army instead of a single division of non-battle-hardened nerds that they were actually up, up against. So, I don't know. It's like a Hall of Mirrors thing. It's like, I'm over here. <laughs> I'm over here. Pew! And they're like, oh, which, God, no, stop which it. Which we know is extremely dangerous if you're shooting lasers around, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's, we, that's, that's true. Yes, we have I'm established. over here. Pew! And shoots himself in the head, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear the hiss of his smoldering neck. Oh, Ooh. maybe that's what that means. Yeah, <laughs> that, this is what the Battletech writers are getting at. <laughs> of course, for yes. Sure. <laughs> um, this tactic delayed the Falcons and allowed the defenders of Robin's Crossing and the Plow Bridge, which again is great. Um, the only two, uh, two the, this allowed the, the defenders here to prepare the bridges. Um, these are the only two bridges over the like dangerously choppy Presno River. Um, Plow Bridge has the distinction of being where Tukiidian high school sweethearts go to lose their virginity. Gotcha, gotcha. It's yeah. a nice overlook. I mean, that's Lore Boy's canon, but... Mm -hmm. I figured. Oh, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, did. I'm having fun, and I'm almost... It's almost too late for me to ask what's going on, but <laughs> who is defending and who is attacking right now? The Com Guards are defending against Clan Jade Falcon. Yeah. Okay, Jade Falcon's attacking, and the Com yeah. Guards are... At uh, present. Yeah. So we, okay, had, okay, we, right. had, we had two clans left, Jade Falcon and Clan Wolf. Yeah, uh, yeah. Clan Wolf is like the hero clan. Uh, okay. I think in a lot of the in a lot of the games, Peter's drinking okay. a beer, but he's giving me a nod, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, and then cool. Clay Jade Fal Clan Jade Falcon uh, is the bad guys in the '80s TV show at the very least. Uh, yeah, so not necessarily good people. And the fact that it's they're like pretty much the rival to Clan Wolf because they're the two that have like kind of the most political power. Okay. They're the they're the main bad guys that kind of bicker amongst themselves. The other clans. Other than smoke jaguars, smoke jaguars, which we have yeah. a full episode, uh, which we have a full episode on already, are kind of like okay, less important at least at this time in history. Yeah, in the 30s, okay. 50s, because smoke jaguars okay. are Com also kind of a rival. Com guards yeah. are home, and falcons are away, but they're hey. trying to win. 
Whoa. Exactly. Who's this sports fan that we got in the podcast <laughs> oh. here? Huh? Yeah. I'm catching up, guys. I'm catching yeah, up. Jamie, now, now. Jamie, that analogy was a touchdown, my friend. Oh, yes, it was. That's good, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I yeah, got a second good. question. What happens to water when it gets cold? Freeze. Uh, yeah, it freezes into ice. Okay, we're almost at the hockey Wait, point. Ice? Here. What are you talking about? <laughs> we're almost there. That's my dog's name. Oh, uh, Senora. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, these two bridges, so the Robin's Crossing and the Plow Bridge, uh, would serve as exploitable bottlenecks against the advancing Falcon forces. Um, the bottleneck is the term in Battletech that the clans use to refer to the slimmer part of a bottle. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It's a it's a portmanteau of bottle and neck in the same way as a bad call. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because if, if you personify a bottle, that's where the neck would be. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, now, no where's the neck no, on my... I'd fuck a mirror, but not a bottle. Now, where's okay. the neck on my smartphone? If we're personifying that. Uh, which smartphone do you have? I have a... Do you have the Samsung Neck 2? Or do you have, a, or do you have <laughs> yeah. a Galaxy? So I, I have the I Samsung Neck. I can't tell you where the, na- the neck is, but if you flip it over, there's the back. And then if you look lower, there's a the pussy and the crack. So. Oh, oh yeah, there wait, we go. my charging slot is a pussy? <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> and then there's a mono speaker and a and a microphone as well, which I think is also in that song. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my neck, my back, my mono speaker and microphone and pussy and my crack. <laughs> I don't think you have to say pussy and crack. <laughs> well, no, pussy and crack is definitely in the song too. A uh, true. <laughs> I'm just singing the song as I remember it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was in a commercial for like the Motorola Crazer, right? Like that's what it was written for. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm not sure how I feel about this next plot point. Um, the clans got like suckered into letting the Comstar see, the, like, set the targets, um, which is something that I complained about in the last episode. But I don't know why they didn't like. Pull like pull out of all these exploitable targets as well. The volcanic wasteland and like the Whitewater River were both incredible. Like yeah, so basically what we're gonna do is stand up on this hill, uh, and then you guys are gonna go stand in this swamp with no cover. <laughs> and the clans were like, you, yeah, you, we got it. We'll, you we'll think you could there. stop us with your hill? We have the yeah. we have swamp powers now, you <laughs> fool. We will simply inject swamp water into our bullets and infect you with the swamp, my friend. You have played yeah. yourself, you fool. <laughs> but naturally, Anastasia had prepared for this and had uh, equipped all of his uh, inner sphere mechs with mirrors, which repels swamp, swamp water. water. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that I don't need to Google. That much I know at the very least. That yeah, exactly. Uh, we don't need to, we don't need to look that one up. <laughs> um but like a lot of the cities that like the the targets that have been set are also just like surrounded by kind of like natural barriers so um going back to the actual fight here at the two bridges the 403rd division of the com guard so the defenders jamie um were crushed at robin's crossing by the first falcon striker uh then the falcons moved in their 305th assault and 124th striker clusters onto the plow bridge. Um, I guess they had some sweethearts they wanted to kiss all at the same time, and that's why they were just like, what if we sent, now hear me out, our biggest guys onto a bridge? Bridges known for their cover, obviously. <laughs> you know, I mean, not that not that it was our one of our beloved covered bridges. It was like a regular suspension bridge, I'm assuming, right? So Sure, yeah. I was picturing an, an arch bridge, but... Yeah, or yeah, something something to that effect. Like something sure, sure. big that would get you over the Presno River, which is, you know, um known to be violent. Sure. Yeah. Um the four hundred and third division uh excuse me, uh the Com Guards two hundred and fourteenth division fell apart after being bombarded by the three hundred and fifth, who were uh three hundred and fifth or Falcon. Um the Falcon three hundred and fifth was mainly assault mechs, which are the most heavily armed and armored mechs of the day. Um, there are super heavies that come later that have like three or four legs. Not important. At this time, the heaviest mechs available were between 80 and 100 tons of just armor and guns. Like, that's it. Except, like, there are some command mechs, but whatever. Um, the Comguard's 388th uh, had dug in around Robin's Crossing and held their ground against a Falcon Guard until Aiden Pride... 
um, and his star, which is five mechs, of um, jumped in and flanked them. So some mechs can get jump jets. Uh, these yeah. use superheated air to kind of launch a mech into the air. It, you can't fly, but you can like like get over a, a, a decently sized fence at the very least. I, I've mentioned it before. The only Mech Warrior I've played is I believe Mech Warrior Three, which came out sometime in the late nineties, early two thousands. I don't know. Yeah. I remember it, I, like ninety eight. Yeah, I, old, I played it's it old on, as fuck. I played it on Windows ninety eight. I had a joystick like an actual joystick with like, you know, thrust controls and all that stuff that I played it on. Um and I I do remember I always played the lightest mechs and I remember I had jetpacks. So my next question was going to be why are these mechs even using a bridge? Why don't they just jetpack over it? Uh, it's because they have a limited temporary. amount of fuel that yeah. needs to recharge. They get hot. Exactly. Yeah. It is really just for tactical repositioning more than anything. Yeah. Um, because I guess when your technology is based around being uh, just slow and plotting, the, the ability to jump... It, when I order not, a pizza, why don't they fly an airplane to me? It would be faster. That's true. Yes, it would be faster. Yeah, why don't they do true. that? Yeah. I'm gonna well, they'd all just end up fucking folded in half. <laughs> 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 Someone's in, like, a, a, <laughs> the biggest fucking airplane, folds my pizza in half, and puts it in the middle of, like, a huge yeah, yeah. warehouse. <laughs> yeah. Like a military a military carrier, just, like, yeah. Yeah. one folded Enough pizza on the floor. Like, <laughs> Enough room for like six hummers, but there's just one folded pizza. It's yeah. <laughs> wrapped down in the middle of the floor. Like yeah, nothing else. Like, those like ratchet ties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back at the bridges here, uh, despite the losses, the Comguard divisions bought enough time for their sappers to send a huge amount of clanners straight to hell. Uh, sappers. I don't know if this is like a specific job. It's an of engineer. Guys who blow up bridges. Yeah. It's an engineer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's like people. It's like engineers in war who blow up bridges. Okay, perfect. And, and stuff like uh, that. Demolitions experts, things like that. Yeah, sappers. Yeah. Um, excuse me. The com guards uh, sent out their sappers to, uh, you know, uh, predictably blow up these fucking bridges, which is just what bridges are for in war, anyway. Um, when they detonated their charges, they collapsed both bridges at the same time. And the com guard had sent 60 clan mechs along with their pilots to be smashed to pieces in the Presno River's rapids. Um, this included the entire command star of the Falcon Guards, except for Aiden Pride. So all of his best um, previously disgraced Falcon Guards were now dashed to pieces on the rocks below. Should have repositioned so, that, idiots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped it away now, moron. <laughs> like, can you imagine, like, guys ejecting underwater just on a jagged rocks? Yeah, yeah. And, like, how terrifying that must be. Um, and then, so after this, before they could regroup, Comstar's uh, 111th and 201st divisions came out of hiding and began to bombard... Oh, uh, yes, and then began to bombard the clanners with long-range weapons and it artillery, because, like, while all the mechs on the bridge fell into the river, not all of them were completely destroyed. And then we had two divisions on the other side in hiding, waiting for the detonation to go off. Um, Aiden and Martha Pride responded with their own air force. So this is one of the first times the clans would bring in anything other than mechs. Planes. To, yeah, wow. exactly. Remember, yeah, like, stop delivering pizzas. Yeah, we got more important shit to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get that <laughs> folded like, pizza out of, that, out of that hangar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pulls, pulls a zip on the parachute on one pizza, and it's like... <laughs> and it's like <laughs> dropped out. Aaron just <laughs> catches it, flies out the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some there's some mech on the ground just like lining up a target of Comstar regulars and just like <laughs> spattered cheese and pepperoni across his windshield. He's like, oh no, goes completely crazy, starts shooting lasers all over the place. Like <laughs> <laughs> a, a mech with pizza on its face. That it, uh, maybe you'll see that in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. Better hope his friends are wearing white. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, shred them all to pieces. <laughs> yeah. um, so the Pride's, uh, the Pride siblings, that is, moved their the remaining battle mechs to a more agreeable part of the river. Um, they had brought military technicians um, to set up pontoon bridges to allow more mechs to cross the river. Um, I mean, I've because I've been out in the wilderness of Canada, I, I'm familiar with setting up pontoon bridges and flying pontoon planes. It's just like a floating tube that you can put kind of minor infrastructure on top of for the uninformed listeners at, sure. at home. 
But I, I'm sure we're all rural enough to understand what a pontoon is between the three of us. Yeah, I mean, I don't know much about pontoons. I do know a bit about folding pizzas, but... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I've been on a pontoon boat and a float plane. I mean, I've tried them both. I think a float plane... I mean, a float, thing, float plane would be the same thing unless it lands on its belly. But, like, a pontoon plane would be... What, it, they come out of the wings instead of is wheels. Okay. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah, skis. It's water skis instead of wheels, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I've yeah. been on that. Yeah. Not like a water bomber that puts out fires or anything, but yeah. yeah. Um, all planes float in the sky, Peter. We can agree on that much at least. What was that? All planes float in the sky. Well, That's not true. Much plane, yeah. 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 So a pontoon is like a wing for the water. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fair? Can't argue with that. Yeah. Um. So while setting up the pontoon bridges, they did kind of sacrifice an entire star of clan mechs so that's five more pilots down bringing the total of just trying to cross this fucking river to at least 65 which honestly for like a uh, previously disgraced warrior cast not a good day i mean bridges are like pretty notorious in war i think like pretty iconic for like exactly like you say bottlenecks and choke points like napoleon defeated by a bridge you know, yeah. after the Battle of Waterloo, his opponents dropped a bridge on the palace and crushed him. That's how that's how Napoleon died. So, oh yeah, they lifted a bridge over the palace of Versailles. Yeah, exactly. And, and crushed, <laughs> him. demolished it, crushed him in his sleep. Yeah. That's how he died. <laughs> See, he'd been eating bridges. Uh, he'd been eating bridges in exile for a long time, and he thought he was immune to them, but he wasn't actually immune. Ah, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> the bridge assassination of <laughs> Napoleon. <laughs> um. The uh, uh, so uh, excuse me. Um, they the pontoon bridges allowed them to reposition and flank the comm guards uh, who were still kind of near the remains of the bridges uh, that they had just detonated. This was uh, very close to the hilariously named target city of Olala. Um, the Falcon Air Force thankfully included some spy planes uh, and a spy pilot named Kale Pershaw uh, was flying just a suborbital recon plane. And noticed some disparities between uh, what he could see with his lying eyes and then the pre-battle maps that had been drawn up. Um, His aircraft's GPS kept telling him to go straight, despite the fact that the road ended at a suspiciously clean cutoff point. And so did all of the other roads uh, around the city of Olala. And, like, it it seemed as though that Olala was set up kind of at a point around a bunch of cul-de-sacs that were that just kind of all ended at a city-sized little square. Okay, so all so these all in the in the all, territory. All these roads coming in end or all these roads going out end. All these roads coming into Olala just kind of abruptly ended at cul-de-sacs and then the city w- had been was positioned somewhere else compared to what he could see and c- what the maps had drawn. The maps showed that a city that very had very distinct roads leading into it, which is kind of a more predictable thing, Standard right? Standard city, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, he made the sensible decision to advise the Pride siblings and send only one star of mechs into Olala. Um, he had watched Blazing Saddles uh, on the clan's Amazon Prime subscription mm-hmm. and had a sixth sense for this sort of elaborate trap. Um, okay. As the sacrificial star entered the city, Comstar's hand was played. They had executed the classic Rock Ridge Shuffle, moving the entire city uh, to the site of some underground ambush bunkers. Um <laughs> So like all the all the buildings in the city were just like wooden cutouts, like in the the old time Hollywood West, where uh, you know, presumably Alexan- Alexander Fox was standing there, and a building fell down, and he just happened to line up perfectly with one of the windows of said building. Oh, I don't know if he Buster Keatoned like an entire sub uh, skyscraper because <laughs> the um, they were obviously it's the future. They got to one up the past. Okay, yeah, right. Sure, sure. They actually just moved the entire city. But like, okay. it, was there just a crater there? Was there a decoy city? Like, was there? No, they did oh, not build okay. a decoy city. This is what I was talking about with these suspicious cul-de-sacs. Is they had just kind of cut the roads off and moved the city and just dropped it somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it wasn't like the wooden cutout thing. It was just you know, it's like wow, I can't believe all the windows on every building are broken because they were irresponsibly moved in a very short amount of time. <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> when when it when like viewed from the sky. 
Um, so the uh, com guards did spring their trap, and they only managed to catch and destroy one star of clan mechs, so five more, because obviously um, Pershaw had told them, like, hey guys, something's a little fucky down there. I know, I know, you know, sci-fi and fiction in general has to take certain liberties to make a story worth telling and all this stuff. But the idea that these hyper-futuristic people just don't have long-range scanners to tell that a fucking city is gone is just, like, insane <laughs> to me. Like, yeah. I know. But it's yeah. like, maybe, yeah, I don't know. If it wasn't there in the first place, then if you're going somewhere, like, how would you know if Montreal was moved five miles east or something like that? Like... If you just I went guess. there and there wasn't a city, then there's nothing to, like, not... If it's not there, there's nothing to detect. Yeah, I guess. I, I know. Guess. It, yeah, yeah it, it's so silly. It's just it's the kind of, like, warrior mentality of the clans where yeah. the com guard just was allowed to set up the battlefield just to exploit the, like, chutzpah and the machismo of the clans. So they were just like, yeah, these guys are literally too fucking stupid to notice if we just move an entire city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, they're they're kind of dumb, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, they killed all the nerds when they when sure. they when sure. they led the exodus, right? Yeah, that's fair. I yeah. mean, Jamie's point makes sense, though. If I landed in Beaujolais Airport and I got on a bus to like go to Paris, the Paris city, and they were like, "We got there, and it was gone," I wouldn't have known the entire bus trip that it wasn't going to be there until I got there, right? Like. Unless I yeah. un unless I'm like hacked in or or hacked into unless I'm logged into the internet and can access hang like, on people I'm reporting into this? Paris yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like I guess an invading army wouldn't necessarily have that luxury of just like having access to classified information like they moved Paris yeah no. well what had happened here is you can read the signs oh it's that way but once you get there then it's oh, yeah. it must be not there. oh yeah that, that was the thing they neglected to do is like oh no we didn't change the exit signs they're gonna think <laughs> we're gonna think they're gonna think there's a wendy's here but we moved it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um well i mean that that is fair it's like tuki it is a obviously an inner sphere planet that they're defending against an invading force so the thing that gave them away was just the fact that the falcons had spy planes because right. they had they had taken like orbital photography prior to the invasion and then the com guards moved an entire city and then this one guy was like wait a second I'm pretty sure the I city think he... should be here so yeah, what exactly. do you do what wasn't do you do there, when you wasn't there a there wendy's and... there yeah exactly <laughs> did they put a face tune on this wendy's because it's looking <laughs> sexier than normal <laughs> so so they get there there's no city what's the next step how do they how do they handle that well, uh, so the com guards didn't know that they had been uh, caught. So when the when the star of the Jade Falcon clan mechs arrived, they just sprung the trap, destroyed the fuck out of them, and okay. then were just were left realizing they had only killed five dudes. Fuck. Yeah, the remaining Falcon guards managed to escape because they had been warned, uh, and then they actually destroyed the last of the hundred and eleventh and the two hundred and first divisions of the com guards. Possibly learning from the com bar, uh, possibly learning from the com guards, and you know, calling for backup. The Falcons moved into the first, moved in, excuse me, the first Falcon Velites, as well as the 89th and the 94th Falcon Strikers, to assist in hunting down the remaining 77th division of the com guard, like the Wild Hogs that they were. So they had their one star destroyed. And then they called for backup because they had seen that work for the com guards in the past against the other clans. This actually allowed the Jade Falcons to briefly capture and hold Olala. They, so they, got, they got one of their target cities. We got one W. Exactly. But now we need the saucier one. We need to get hump tulips, baby. How, mm -hmm. do, how do we do that? Are we um, send in the clan wolves. Uh, no. It's, that's, <laughs> they don't share targets. <laughs> Uh, the com guards saw the Falcon backup, uh, saw the Falcons backup, and raised them one way more fucking backup. Uh, after the Ghost Bears had withdrawn in an earlier battle that we talked about in the last episode, the Comstar moved a massive amount of its forces to the front um, to support the guard on at Olala via dropship. Um, they also moved some forces uh, from Hump Tulips to assist because the Falcons had focused Olala and had been, you know, dropped into a river. Yeah. So Hump Tulips didn't really have too much to worry about. Sure. Um, 
uh, they were truly dedicated to saving two keys horniest locations <laughs> of like hump tulips and plow bridge so a com guard airstrike blew up a fal- uh, falcon refit and resupply station as the battle began to turn against the falcons so they started to target their ammo reserves and their mechanics instead of just their soldiers because they could really outlast and like anyone who can run out of ammo can't last forever right um, the cons decided it was time to withdraw after the destruction of their supply chain and Tukid's tulip bulbs would remain unhumped oh, for well, this battle. Humped by the locals, presumably, because they're the ones that named it that. Well, they had a celebratory hump of the tulip, blo- uh, tulip bulb. <laughs> like, course. dirty clan balls were spared from the garden, <laughs> the, the window boxes. The virginal of, tulips. Of Tukid. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, at least for the next 15 years, of course. Um... The retreat, however, would go down as one of, if not the bloodiest battle on Tukiid, or maybe even the entire clan invasion. Uh, the Com Guards 309th tried to uh, f- uh, tried to fight to the last man to stop the Falcons' retreat. Uh, despite being filthy casuals, they managed to take seventy percent of the Falcons' forces with them. Wow! So they went down, but they took a lot of them. Um, the desperate Falcon pilots smashed through the 90th division on their way back to their landing zone. So they were just like, holy fuck, where did we park? We're never going to hump these tulips, boys. We got it. We got to go. <laughs> Hit the eject. Not literally take your mech with you, you idiot. And after one guy has obviously just like spiraled off into the yeah, atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were intercepted by two Overlord dropships on their way back to their landing zone. Um, Overlords are a huge uh, military dropship. They're shaped like eggs. Uh, they carry 36 mechs uh, as well as a bunch of fighter jets. So okay. it's kind of like a full battalion here that drops down. It's uh, eight lances uh, for the Inner Sphere. Okay. Um, that helps they... An Inner Sphere boy. That's um, eight Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah well, no, uh, eight lances is 36 Fahrenheit. Oh, 36 yeah. Fahrenheit. Sorry. I yeah. Got that. There you go. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 92 yeah. degrees. I got you. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, figuring, uh, figuring they need, um, they they needed to make an omelet before they all died. The uh, the retreating falcons managed to shoot down one of the overlords, um, destroying all the mechs and killing all hands when it hit the ground. Uh, however, the second one landed and deployed its forces successfully. So during their retreat, now, um, the falcons were faced with thirty six fresh battle mechs. That were coming down from the sky after they had just been, you know, the, the whole thing that had just happened to them. Not looking, uh, not looking good for our guys, the antagonists. No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aiden Pride stood his ground against the Com Guard, allowing his sister and his remaining forces to board their own ships and escape. Um, Aiden Pride was killed when his Timberwolf battle mech was destroyed. Uh, the final shot was delivered by a nobody. Um, named Dylan Dre, piloting piloting an itty bitty little uh, like super light stinger battle mech. It only weighed twenty tons, um, and since being killed by a light mech is for pussies. And the Com Guard admired Pride's final stand. No one officially claimed the kill. So in the history books, Aiden Pride was absolutely not killed by some kid who just chucked a rock at his mech, <laughs> and, and, and that was his final HP point. So, so <laughs> just some rookie just like enjoying a banana, like a, a like on his own on his break during the battle, just like mm, d- delicious, tasty banana. I guess I'll just throw this peel away and like tosses yeah. it to one side, and then Adrian Pierce slips on it, breaks his neck, like. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and then he just like toss a banana peel out the window. He's like, "Thank God, I get fifteen minutes off in every war." They yeah, like yeah. <laughs> this union's really working for yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, They'll never let Two yeah. K Eight host the Olympics again. Now that uh, the leader of another nation has has slipped on a banana peel peel down the stairs. <laughs> It's probably good for like the surviving veterans though, because like all of them could say, "Oh no, I was the one who killed. No, I was the one who killed him." You know, and they could tell their grandkids that, and no one can prove yeah. them wrong. Yeah. yeah. Well, they could at least, t- uh, and they probably they respected Aiden Pride a lot for his courage, and they would probably all tell their grandkids, "It's like, oh, don't worry, I shot Aiden Pride." Yeah. Yeah, it's like a firing squad where you give like ten guys blanks, but and, and like or nine guys blanks and one guy a bullet, so no one knows who killed the guy. Yeah, kind of opposite though, right? 
where everybody has loaded guns, but no one knows which bullet killed them. Yeah, sure, it's yeah, exactly. completely opposite, actually. the firing squad, you want everyone to be able to say, like, no, I didn't kill Mata Hari. It was, yeah. you know, one of the other guys in the firing squad. <laughs> so, that was the end of the Falcon. Uh, that was the re- the end of the Falcon incursion into Tukiid. Now, uh, if we recall in the last episode, Clan Wolf was voted uh, by the other clan survivors on the island to go last in the battle as kind of a method of shaming them for buying up and using all the inner sphere intelligence that was freely given to them by right, Comstar right, right. In, a, in an effort to be just like, hey, what if you didn't kill us all? We'll give you everyone's secrets because we, you know, read your Facebook chats and your WhatsApp crap and whatnot. Yeah. Sort of thing. They did the classic. It, it, was, um, it was just targeted ads at them. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like, thinking about invading 2 Eid, consider not standing yeah, on bridges. <laughs> <laughs> the leader of Clan Wolf was like, hmm, okay, well, maybe yeah. I will consider that. You know, those roaring rapids do look kind of dangerous, actually. I, maybe I should avoid <laughs> it. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, that's why the clans, the clans were just like, you bitches, you can read, and you, they're sending you emails and shit. No, yeah. you go last, and clan was just like, F- fucking fine. Yeah. All right. okay. You guys soften them up as much as possible, and then we'll go. That sounds great, yeah. No, please stop. No. <laughs> The, it's like to I, I know we referenced uh, Blazing Saddles already, but just for another classic Gene Wilder line mm-hmm. is is uh, the one from Willy Wonka where I don't know one of the disobedient children was trying to kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the wolves didn't seem to mind, like I said, um, and they used this baby bitch currency called knowledge to their advantage. Um, they broke from traditional clan tactics and prepared for the long haul because. Obviously, at this point, they had seen every single other clan just be, like, completely destroyed by um, uh, Anastasia's Fox, just, like, calling in backup. Yeah. Where they, they were, they had decided on, like, well, we're going to fight 20 on 20, and when Fox didn't do that, they were just like, how, I don't know how we got outnumbered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's <it. laughs> the second The second team was like, well, they did that to the last guys, but they wouldn't do that to us. And then the third team was like, well, they did that to the last two guys, but they wouldn't do that to us. And then the fourth guys the were chances? like, well, they did that to the last three guys, <laughs> but they wouldn't do that yeah. to us, and et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're not. They're. It's not. It, the clans are not gambling men, right? They're <laughs> not like. I mean, they're. Stupid, they're stupid in a different way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, they set up supply chains and multiple locations to repair and reload. So they had. Um, it's called an MFB. It's a uh, mobile field base, and they had moved those around their areas, and they had them follow their lances as well, or their um, stars as well, to make sure that, like, you know, you didn't run out of ammo, but just in case. Um, clan mechs are referred to as omni mechs uh, because they don't have a hard point. Uh, this is in an older episode, but just as a quick recap, a hard point is just a section of a mech that you can only install one class of weapon in. So you have a hard point that contains heat sinks. That is for an energy weapon because lasers get hot. Then you have a missile they rack. Mirrors. They bounce off mirrors. Exactly. <laughs> Then you have a missile rack that feeds missiles, and then you have like a ballistic hard point that feeds bullets. Omnimex doesn't matter if they use something called an Omnipod, so you can just take shit out and click it in. It's like kind of like a kind of like a computer, I guess, where it's just like a bunch of slots for things. It's just like they have PCIe <laughs> yeah, in they, all of their all of their. They, um, they invented the USB. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They still don't have fucking headphone jacks though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my new phone doesn't have a headphone jack, and I just realized yesterday. It's annoying, I, hey? I wouldn't I, have bought it. When I, when I bought my last phone, I searched for phones that had them, and there's almost none that have them anymore. Jesus, They're man. so hard to find. We That's all have true. bad phones, yeah. apparently. I, I haven't had a headphone jack in years, because I use iPhones. But All my all my previous phones have. My my backup phone, because I, I break phones a lot, has has one. It's one of the, the older Samsungs or whatever, but... Uh, my my phone phone does not have one. It's so annoying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the the Omnimax do have. They can swap out their weapons, but there is still no headphone jack. So fuck us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. fuck, fuck us, the three point five millimeter consumer. Just of ha- the, half the, the inner spear. Half the clan. Half the clans got wiped out because they're like soldiers were just in the mech trying to get their fucking Bluetooth headphones to connect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they got fucking wiped out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Microphone connected. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Disconnected. Disconnected. Fuck. Ah! Yeah, 
Apple Maps keeps telling me to cross Plow Bridge, but it's clearly been destroyed. I don't yeah. know where you want me to go. <laughs> um. So yeah. Anyway, like it, they 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 use their Omnimex to switch over to mostly energy based weapons because energy based weapons are good for the long haul. They can get hot, but they, they don't run out of energy. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Heat dissipates. Um. Not, and not on mirrors. Sorry. Not on mirrors. It doesn't. On white no. it does, but not on mirrors. Right. Uh, yeah, that's true. We learned. So they, <laughs> they lined the insides of all their omnipods with white fabric. <laughs> yeah. Bounce the heat back into the laser. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Um, Khan Natasha Kerensky uh, had also been using information she had gotten from the interrogation of the captured inner sphere um, military man Phelan Kell. Um, Kell would eventually join the wolves, and Phelan is Gaelic for Kell. Um, and his bloodline is Wait. of some significance. Sorry? Phelan is Gaelic for Kell, so his name is Kell Kell? Oh, god damn it. No, it's, it's Gaelic for wolf. Oh, <laughs> I was okay. like, what are you okay. talking about? Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Phelan Kell, his name is Gaelic for his parents had no idea what yeah, they were yeah. doing. Good old, yeah. good old, Phelan, good old Kel wolf, wolf, the, the descendant wolf of Pig Pig the Cop, the Christmas cop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cop, cop. <laughs> Um, Kel would eventually join the wolves, uh, as it would be revealed later on that his bloodline has some significance to them, which I will not get into because that is an entirely other war that we can talk about in the future. Uh, Fox knew that Wolf would be his most difficult opponent, um, and he tried to plan around that. Uh, he bet on the fact that all the other clans would be defeated and that he could reinforce his top tier elite divisions with those still able to fight from previous engagements. So he did overcompensate in this case where he's like well i'm clearly going to win these fights so when i get to the final boss i will have enough potions yeah, I, that's it I, I knew i saved yeah. those health potions for a reason exactly you're telling uh, me the man the actually other... used them when <laughs> yeah. when fighting uh our yeah. or whatever or... he had been farming on he had just been like farming the other clans for resources and now he's now he's for now he's ready to go he's done all his crafting and all his alchemy and shit so he's he's good uh, he transferred the 278th division uh, back, back uh, to back up the 9th and 10th. Uh, the 10th was set to defend the target cities of Burzo and Scupo, which is also hilarious. Um, while <laughs> the sexy, 9th was but still funny. What was that? Not sexy, but still funny. Still funny. Uh, while the 9th was sent to defend the production company behind the Rugrats, which is Klasky Scupo. Um, like the Jade Falcon, the wolf landed unopposed near the target cities, um, and expecting a fight advanced slowly, but this time shoulder to shoulder. Um, the inexperienced 66th and 283rd divisions prevented the advancing wolves from encircling their allies in the 166th and 278th. Uh, however, they were all pushed back into a wooded area at the base of a mountain. Um, so these guys are doing okay, our protest. They're doing fine not great uh they are slowing the advance of clan regular wolf but not exactly uh, oh yeah pushing I, them back. I i meant our our protags right regular wolf are are doing doing pretty good as far as clans go so far uh y they're doing better than the other clans because they were not like immediately bamboozled by yeah, yeah. <laughs> like backup basically yeah. um the 278th had been transferred to you know help out um but now they had been now they were retreating under their own artillery fire so they were using kind of the um shock and awe bombardment thing that people used in world war one to cover their retreat by bombing behind them um after the retreat uh presenter margot koivu realized she was not being followed by uh clan wolf and ordered her recon teams to be reinforced so she was now she's the suspicious one um, it was discovered that the wolves were organizing wave attacks in an attempt to completely bypass the 166 retreat. So they would hit them in big bursts to try and throw off, the, um, like kind of the more consistent pattern of of a retreating army. Well, yeah, with their because they have the laser weapons, right? So they they overheat. So if they hit with all at once, then they all have to back up to let their weapons cool down. But if they hit yeah. like, it's kind of like the musket fire rows, you know, where you one musket 
uh, one line of muskets shoot, then the second line of muskets shoot, then the third line of muskets shoot. So they never stop shooting. So you never have time exactly. to retreat, right? Yeah. 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 Like that had never occurred to me, but you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, so the Congar tries to organize some backup from other divisions, but the wolves continue to push through and they completely destroyed the veteran 282nd division. Um, however, the sacrifice of the 282nd allowed the 10th army to retreat back to Skubo. Um, Clan Wolf had successfully captured Burzo, their first target city. So they very clearly knew what they were doing no, because they nobody kind of... nobody yanked the bridge out from under them. <laughs> uh, no bridges, and they neglected to move the entire city over a huge pit full of wooden spikes or whatever, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like under a big tree with a net. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't think of anything clever this time. Mm. Um, Focht managed to ambush the Clanners with his 138th division, but either through stubbornness or stupidity, uh, the Clanners simply could not understand the concept of an ambush in this instance and successfully defended themselves. They were just <laughs> like, oh, no, this isn't a surprise, just another fight, lads, and yeah. <laughs> defend themselves. Um, beating back the ambush and killing the division's pre-center, um, Yernberg, just some other guy who was in the fight. He's Yernberg dead. Yernberg Miller. Oh, hey, Yernberg. Journey. <laughs> Regular Yernberg. Yeah, that was and, his uh, name. Miller's actually Gaelic for Yernberg. <laughs> it's Yernberg, Yernberg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, and now we come to the conclusion of the fight here. Uh, Fox at this point was all, oh, oh, geez, oh, man, oh, geez, oh, man, oh, geez, oh, man. Oh, Gil almost had that sale buddy yeah it's like oh <laughs> old fuck that you did it there old fuck you, you got him in but you failed you didn't hook the clans oh <laughs> um he ordered the ninth to abandon uh to abandon excuse me the regrets animation studio and back up the 10th as they retreated to scoopo um morale within the com guard for the first time began to falter as the wolves tore apart their divisions including the elite 166th uh, the 278th at this point were the last Calm Guard division fighting back the clans, and Ulrich Kerensky uh, ordered that the 11th Wolf Guard uh, go in to finish off the division. Um, despite inflicting heavy losses on the 11th, the 278th went down fighting. So they're all gone as well. Damn. Yeah. Uh, Focht ordered his remaining units to retreat from Scupo to save their lives. At this point, he was no longer interested in defending the target cities. I mean, he's kind of at the end of his campaign where he was thoroughly victorious throughout the whole thing. So, I mean, maybe not ordering more men to go die for him was not exactly generous, but... Eh. Yeah, I mean, fair. Right? I, I could see some narcissists, you know, being like, no, I could never lose. Like, I haven't lost yet, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. I have more indentured peasants to sacrifice. The, I'm not done yet. Yeah. The character could have just as easily been like that, you know? So Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wolf advanced slowly into the city, checking to make sure that it was in the same place as it was. So <laughs> yeah. that uh, hilarious goof we had made earlier was oh. something that, the, that the, the wolves had actually considered, where they were just like, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Anybody Check want the Wendy's? Map. There's a Wendy's right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Baconator. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> no, the Baconators never run out of ammo, but they do run very hot. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, well, that's the problem. see, the good thing about Clan Max is they don't need a circular patty slot and a square patty slot. They can just enjoy either either kind of burger patty. Right, of course. Yeah, they have, the Omni, they have the they have the Omni Burgers, yeah, which Omni they, burgers. Can just, they can just put any, <laughs> any burger they need into the Mac. <laughs> um, the withdrawal of the Jade Falcons provided Focht with a little bit more backup, so he tried one more time, which helped him push the wolves out of Burzo. Uh, however, this was undone at night when a thunderstorm rolled in, and Natasha Kerensky moved in and ultimately captured the city. Um, the Comguard pilot, uh, excuse me, um, while the clan ambush allowed them to take the city, uh, Khan Garth Raddick was killed when a Gauss rifle round hit his mech's cockpit. Um, the Comguard pilot who killed him was apparently the roadrunner from Looney Tunes, because after he scored a headshot on Radix 95-ton mech, it just toppled off a cliff and then 
landed on its head, crushing the cockpit even more. And then an anvil so, like, landed on it, right? Yeah, like, well, and I a piano, was, and he came out, and he had yeah. the teeth. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, like, he had, he had a, um, a, a cocktail parasol, like one of the tiny umbrellas, but it wasn't enough yeah. to save him from a piano and anvil. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Autopsy revealed eight piano keys in his mouth. It's like, God, <laughs> God damn those inner sphere yeah. bastards. <laughs> Um, so he was killed but that was the end of him um, the uh, where am I here sorry uh, Phelan Kell excuse me who I had mentioned earlier would lady, uh, later actually take Radix's position as a minor con of Clan Wolf so okay. Phelan Kell at, after being interrogated was just like hey man uh, see you got a vacancy uh, after yeah. uh, you know Somebody yeah. won't say who. I hear Somebody, you're a spineless coward who's willing to divulge secrets. You want a job there, son? <laughs> oh boy, do I? My, my <laughs> skills need, include. We have to show them the pliers. Yeah, yeah, my skills include standing on the bottom edge of an overhang cliff and sawing upwards a hole through it, uh, and uh, dropping pianos on people. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 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 Uh, all good Perfect. things. I'm really good at painting photorealistic pictures of tunnels onto cliff faces. If that's Even better. That you're, uh, what is your defense ordinary? against a man who straps a cartoon rocket to his back and thinks that would make him run faster than you? I would simply uh, use a big magnet to have him attracted to the magnet rather than my, uh, rather than myself. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> yes. Uh, which is funny that we make these Wiley Coyote references now. I'm realizing the one time the coyote caught the Roadrunner is he built a mecha coyote. <laughs> he caught him? In the... In the old cartoons, yeah. He didn't kill him, but he, but he, he did end up catching up. Yeah. The Wily e. Coyote clan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, so this would result in the victory of Clan Wolf against um, the Calm Guards because they did manage to capture both the cities. And this victory would become known as the Clan Wolf's Greatest Hour. Um, after 21 days of fighting, the clans conceded defeat. They had two victories, uh, credit to Clan Wolf, Two draws, clan, uh, credit to the Jade Falcons and the Ghost Bears, and then nothing but painful and agonizing failure. Uh, <laughs> this then gave the nothing inter- even close, not even within a country mile. <laughs> not even, yeah, exactly, nothing. Is they were they're adding up the points, and they got two and a half out of a possible ten, and yeah. it was like cool. Although, so although guess- knowing knowing the bargaining, you know. Um, potency of the clans i wouldn't be surprised if it was like yeah the you know the first the first six matches they they counted for 100 points your last two matches only counted for one point each so you know you got you uh, got one point for the win you got zero for the tie and now you're at you're at minus 600 unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh boo i only i guess we only get 15 years of peace yeah <laughs> Uh, so the the victory for the Comgards at Tukiyid gave them their shitty 15 years that they had bargained badly for uh, when preparing for the clan invasion or the clan fight um, and before they would resume the planned res- like resuming of the invasion um, however the multiple failures and the kind of shaming of clan tactics uh, changed politics within the clans forever and is pretty much the catalyst or at least one of the catalysts for the refusal war which we're not going to get into in 3057 um, not going to get into it, on this episode uh, well i well exactly not, Give, not currently given exactly. infinite time the lore boys will cover <laughs> the, uh, that at some point the refusal war refusal yeah. war i want to say yeah. refugee war i was like i know that's not what he said no, <laughs> he, no, no he no. just said it but i've already forgotten it <laughs> Uh, so on Tukiid, nearly a quarter of the clan cons were dead or missing, um, as well as un- other influential warriors like Aiden Pride. Uh, Fucked and Comstar would become deified, which kind of leads to the Blake Jihad, which we have an episode about already. Mm-hmm. Um, and the clans who didn't like the terms would be destroyed in various operations like Bulldog. Again, we have Operation episode. Bulldog episode. Yeah. And a lot of other important things happen just because of the uh, just because of the Battle of Tukiid. It's kind of the linchpin. It's kind of what the story changes and flips into doing kind of other things. I gotta say, um, so that's I'm, it. I'm super keen on listening to uh, the Blake Jihad now through the context of knowing who Alexander Fox was and and you know uh, what Comstar did in in this defense more so than I was yeah. the first time we listened to it. I I really like the BattleTech episodes, Pete. So uh, keep them coming, I guess. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> they're very much my style, I, I think. So I'm, I'm happy to hear it from somebody else other than just me talking about Warhammer 40k for days and days it, and days. It's so much information, but like doing the research is 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 so much fun. And I do want to apologize to, to like some of our patrons, uh, Dark Side especially, um, and other people who are just like, "Hey Pete, do more Battle Tech," and I'm just like, ah, "I don't know. I didn't really like those games, so I guess I won't." <laughs> right. Pete, Pete doesn't want to. Pete doesn't want to apologize to the people who are just screaming, "Do Halo the Flood!" From the That's fucking my bleachers. next one, right? <laughs> no, okay, no. I promise. Yeah. You hear that? You heard it here first, folks. He promises. Uh, we we do fulfill our promises. Uh, I've been your uh, co-host, Ian Holmes slash Ethan Palmer. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. If you want to get in touch with us, loreboys.com slash about is a great way to do it. Uh, it's got all our contact info and it has the Discord. That's got to be the number one way to get in touch with us. Uh, Peter, do you, do you have anything that you want to plug? Uh, yeah, uh, Lore Boys Podcast or at Lore Boys Podcast on Instagram is a, a very good way to get in touch with us as well. Discord is number one. Um, not only have all three of us individually signed out of Twitter, the Lore Boys has signed out of Twitter. It's an awful place. Um, and you can check out my publisher, Squared Idea, if you want some supplementary content uh, in the intervening moments. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Jimbo, anything you got? Uh, you can find me twitch.tv slash the lore boys. I've been streaming uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays lately. Uh, Fridays has been like so much fun. I've been that just, Friday, Friday night stream last week was so much oh. fun, man. Oh my God. Yeah. The last two weeks, it, it, even though it's wow content, I don't think you need to fully know wow to have fun just because uh, there's a bunch of cool people hanging out and uh, get in the discord. I'll, I'll let you know when it's happening. And just we, we were just doing a bunch of silly stuff and, and watching James, uh, uh, do things very poorly but, but well <laughs> well if that makes sense like he was so I, he was yeah, trolling. Like, he was kind of trolling nobody tell if there's any anybody who listens to the show is one of the people in his dkp raid don't tell don't tell anybody but uh so there's this one fight where man, you, yeah i have to be on the wrong side of my, my job is to heal but there's nothing to heal so i was going for overhealing which is completely useless so i i Pumped all my buttons, popped a bunch of expensive consumes just to get the 69 overhealing. 69,000 healed... 69, overheal. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of over... It's like almost as much healing as like the healers are doing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then a wasted I... effort. Yeah. Then ran in and meleeed the boss as a priest whenever the boss does like a fire nova and just kills me instantly. Yeah. It was... <laughs> <laughs> it's complete like and the one person who, the one person who he actually was supposed to be keeping alive did die in that fight and we yeah. all we all had a laugh because he died in every single fight <laughs> it was the guy oh who, that guy probably hates me dude I, <laughs> yeah uh anyway, anyway we had a right, come, come check out the the, the twitch because yeah. there's a lot of silly stuff going on there yeah. jamie's chatting uh i'm ch I, I was in chat for the whole thing uh, i'm not there for all of them but i, I try to always be there for them uh twitch.tv yeah. slash the lore boys you can spell it i believe in you um anybody who wants to support the show financially big shout out to all our patrons um i believe question of the week from one of our patrons zavi was uh what sound does a giraffe make and i would assume that's just the sound of my me peeing my pants because i'm terrified of giraffes. <laughs> jamie you're gonna make me pee my pants stop doing that <laughs> <laughs> i've already peed my pants so. <laughs> yeah. um Anybody who wants to support the show like like that and ask those questions and have us ask them on air, you can head to uh, patreon.com slash theloreboys and uh, find us there. Uh, super, 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 super appreciate it. Uh, you guys are the best. Love you. Kisses. Uh, any, <laughs> anybody who doesn't trust Patreon, of course, we do offer uh, Lore Boys Prime, something we've offered way longer than we've offered Patreon. And we use Lore Boys Prime to get to the bottom of the greater questions in life, the, the deeper questions questions in life uh, you get to know us intimately uh so we're doing we're doing some research these days uh we need to find out what the perfect torque angle is for an atomic wedgie uh <laughs> we're trying to get jamie's underpants up over his head but the truth is that jamie just doesn't own very stretchy underwear so he's really yeah. got he's really got a bend for it they kind of crumble if you pull at them too much yeah no it's, it's <laughs> so strange i touch jamie's underwear and they just turn to dust in my hand it's the strangest thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> like they're like mummy wrapping basically <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. exactly it's as soon as you open up jamie's sarcophagus and the atmosphere gets in it just starts to immediately decompose <laughs> reggie falls out yeah so uh we we need all all the listeners at home to uh torque and take measurements of the distance from their forehead 
to the top of their hips, both at the bottom of the torque and at the top of the torque. Uh, we, yeah. did, we did both those measurements, and then we could figure out the, the radians, uh, the pie, the sweet pie that is that booty um, that, that <laughs> results in the trigger. <laughs> uh, and then we could, we could do the math from there. Jamie's really good at math. He can't read, but boy, he's like Rain Man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that constitutes? Yeah, that constitutes. Uh, lore boys. Lore boys. Lore boys. Out. Out. Uh, my name's Ethan. Uh, of all the colors of the rainbow, my favorite's gotta be blue because it reminds me of Jamie's blue blue balls. <laughs> My name's DJ Blue Balls, <laughs> and I love the color purple, which is the color after my balls are blue. Oh, <laughs> you should get that checked out. Uh, my name is DJ Red Rocket, and I prefer to blue ball animals. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Ethan. And uh, my favorite color of traffic light is yellow because it implies a sense of danger. My name's James, and I like yellow because, you know what? It's right in the middle. It's like the, the, the three bears stew kind of thing or whatever they eat. Oh, it was always the last one that uh, Goldilocks tasted was the best one. But... Yeah, but it's not too green, not too red. You know, it's not too fast, not too slow. <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Peter. Uh, my I, I share uh, Jamie's opinion in the fact my favorite Mother Goose story is the one where Goldilocks dies in a traffic accident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. My name's Ethan. If I could be any animal, it would be the majestic sea slug who uh, works tirelessly cleaning the bottoms of boats. Yeah, my name's James, and I tried sleeping on my neck and my back, but it turns out I need to sleep on my pussy, pussy. or crack. <laughs> your crack. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> you're a poet. <laughs> <laughs> here we go oh! here we go <laughs> that, I'm surprised that's not what knocked down my crew <laughs> it's I mean let's be honest if you hadn't already knocked it over before you would have knocked it over this time yeah, for sure. exactly. <laughs> it's a good thing I had the keyboard at the front of the desk and the laptop at the back or else yeah. the laptop would have got yeah. the this thing can handle a whole bottle of red wine as we found out exactly yeah. uh, speaking of red wine my name is Ethan my favorite wine is white because white is also the color of my favorite kind of caterpillar my favorite type of wine is the blue kind because it's the rarest because it's hard to get blue dye oh yeah it's rare pepe they come from horseshoe crabs cost more than blood yeah uh, my name is Peter I'm also a uh, white wine kind of guy because I like to miss it with uh, sparkling water, uh, because I'm uh, weak of constitution. Um, but the blue wine, you can get the Revolution Blue around uh, Quebec's uh, provincial holiday. The Revolution Blue um, comes out around June 24th. Uh, it's like a chug jug. You guys ever heard that new chug jug song that's really popular on the TikToks? Chug nope. jug. Chug uh, it, it's, chug. To the, it's to the tune of American Boy. I'm You'll going be down. My to... American boy. Okay, yeah. I know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I don't know that. Just cleared Tomato Town and like all this this Fortnite bullshit. Yeah. But oh, there's I see. apps where you could upload anyone's face and make them sing it, and their yeah. eyes look all over and stuff. Oh, I I've saw seen that. Freaky. Yeah. All right, Jamie. Could uh, sorry, uh, came in a little crackly. Could you hit me with that one one more time? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're looking nice and nice and square. Nice and square. Uh, Pete, why don't you hit me with one? Oh. oh, Pete, that's awful. Yeah, that is just awful. That that sound form. Sorry, it's no good. That's eh. okay. I mean, it's it, not all of us could be gifted uh, recording proteges like James over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. he's eating his beard now. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> Jamie, spit it out. Spit it out. This is the future, this is the future <laughs> liberals want. Like, put his beard on as a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I can almost do it. Yeah. Drop it. Drop it, Jamie. Drop it. Mm.